we'll discuss how contrast enhanced ct is done in renal protocol in multiple phases along with ct urography and the concept behind the enhancement pattern in multiphasic ct we'll also discuss in detail about split bolus techniques along with the regular conventional multiphasic technique what all are we going to discuss in this video first we'll see the relevant anatomy then we'll discuss the conventional multiphasic renal protocol including the three phases that is corticomedullary phase their timing nephrographic phase and excretory phases then we'll discuss multiphasic ct versus the difference between it and ct urography next we'll discuss split bolus and triple bolus techniques coming to gross anatomy of kidney this is the cross section where we can see the cortex and the triangular medulla or pyramids and then there is renal sinus from where ureter exists and vessels enter we have minor calyx major calyx and this is the renal pelvis with the collecting system if we take a microscopic section at this level we can see the light yellow one is the cortex dark yellow one is the medulla and the one in black which i am drawing now is the nephron so what are the parts of nephron lying in the cortex we have the glomerulus with afferent and efferent arterioles proximal convoluted tubule ascending and descending loop of henle these all lie in the cortex and medulla contains mainly the collecting ducts okay first of all why do we need to perform a multiphasic renal ct the cortex and medulla constitute the renal parenchyma also along with that we have vascular pedicle and urinary tract all these three enhance separately in different phases which we'll see in order to see this differential enhancement we have four phases first conventionally we take a non contrast ct of the kub next we have corticomedullary phase the nephrographic phase and the last phase that is excretory or delayed phase in these four phases different structures will enhance before moving on to the actual protocol we'll see how to prepare the patient before the ct patient should be nil per oral for 4 to 6 hours since it's a contrast study there should be normal serum creatinine level that is below 1.3 you may or may not give a negative oral contrast that is nothing but 500 to 700 ml of water over 15 to 20 minutes but please do not give positive oral contrast next what contrast we use for the ct or multiphasic ct we use a non ionic dye 300 mg iodine per ml concentration and quantity what we use is approximately 100 to 120 ml and we give it at the rate of 3 to 4 ml per second why do we take a non contrast phase this is a baseline phase or sequence in all the studies of kub we can rule out hemorrhage mainly active hemorrhage renal calculi any calcification in the mass or a lesion or hyperdense cyst can be ruled out in this phase next we give iv contrast and first we'll take the cortico medullary phase at 30 to 40 seconds after injection of the iv contrast or if we are using bolus trigger method then we can take it after 20 to 30 seconds after bolus trigger okay in this the cortex will enhance and the cortex and medulla can be very well differentiated and also the vascular structure especially the renal vein is very well enhanced and we can see any vascular abnormalities in this phase next we have nephrographic phase which is taken at 90 to 120 seconds after injection in nephrographic phase the contrast has moved from cortex to medulla and also the contra uh, contrast is present in the cortex slightly so there is uniform enhancement of renal parenchyma as shown in the illustration next we have excretory phase taken at 180 seconds or 3 to 5 minutes after injection in this the dye has already come to the collecting system minor calyx and major calyx and the urinary tract can be very well seen on 
excrete your delayed phase. Let's see each phase in detail. This is how the corticomedullary phase looks like. There is enhanced cortex, unenhanced medulla. Hence, they can be very well differentiated from each other. Also, vascular structures are seen and hypervascular tumors can be identified. We can identify pseudo tumors or normal variants of the renal parenchyma. Also, we can see tumor extension into renal veins in this phase. Next, in nephrographic phase, this is how we can see this homogeneous enhancement or uniform enhancement of the whole renal parenchyma, including cortex and medulla. If any renal lesions are present, like renal infarction, renal trauma, or acute pyelonephritis, and especially renal masses can be very well seen in this phase. If they are less than 3 cm, they can be very well identified and all these appear as hypodense areas against the background of enhancing renal parenchyma. In excretory phase, we can see that contrast has already reached the collecting system or the urinary tract. Any urothelial neoplasms, calicial deformities, papillary necrosis or strictures in the urinary tract, inflammatory lesions can be seen in excretory phase. This was multiphasic CT. Now we will see what is the difference between multiphasic CT and CT urography. Multiphasic CT is used for renal parenchyma and excretory system. Urography is used especially for urinary tract and its one-stop imaging modality. It combines CT and IVP. There is maximum intensity projection or MIP used in excretory phase which gives IVP like images. That's all a CT urography. We'll see how it's done. So the procedure is almost similar. But we will distend the urinary tract for it to be well visualized because this is one stop imaging for the urinary tract. So to distend the urinary system we can use diuretics like furosemide one minute before the study. We can give 1000 ml of water in 15 to 20 minutes. We can give a saline rush 250 ml after IV contrast. Patient lies in prone position during the scan and the, and the images will be reconstituted into maximum intensity projection. Other multiplanar reconstitutions can be done and volume rendering techniques can be used to make IVP like images. While performing CT urography we can use four phase protocol or a three phase protocol. In order to reduce radiation, we can use three phase protocol. We'll see what is four phase protocol. There is non contrast sequence which we take. Next, we take a nephrographic phase. Then we take two excretory phases. So, one is at five minutes, one is at 7.5 minutes, since this is to concentrate on the urinary tract. Next, in three phase protocol, we have standard non contrast sequence. Then a nephrographic phase and then one delayed phase or excretory phase is taken at 12 to 15 minutes. At this stage contrast can be seen from calluses up to the bladder since it would have reached the bladder at 12 to 15 minutes. Done with CT urography. Now we will come to split bolus technique of multiphasic CT. This is used to minimize the sequences hence it will minimize the radiation dose to the patients. So we can take it in two phases. Split bolus technique, we take in two phases. First we take a non-contrast. Next we take a nephropylographic sequence which combines nephrographic phase and also the excretory or the delayed phase. So first bolus we give 30 ml of IV contrast. Patient is allowed to walk for 10 to 15 minutes. Then we give 100 ml of second bolus contrast. Then after 100 seconds delay, we acquire one sequence. This is the nephropylographic sequence which we acquire. So we have non-contrast and this one sequence which combines nephrographic and excretory phase. Total 130 ml of contrast is given in the split bolus technique. How does this technique work? The first 30 ml bolus would have reached the caliceal system by that time patient walks. Next 100 ml which you give will enhance the renal parenchyma. So finally all the three structures cortex, medulla and the urinary tract are enhanced. This is called nephropylographic phase. 
Next, we have modification of this split bolus that is triple bolus technique in which we use a single phase that is corticomedullary, nephrographic and urographic or excretory are all combined together. The bolus is split into three parts. First, we give 30 ml bolus at 2 ml per second. After 7 minutes, we give 50 ml bolus that is the second bolus. This we give at the rate of 1.5 ml per second. Next, after 20 seconds, we give the third bolus that is 65 ml at 3 ml per second. After all these are given, scan is acquired in one single phase after 510 seconds after giving first bolus. So, total of 145 ml contrast is given in the triple bolus technique. In split bolus, we gave 130 ml. Here, we are giving 145 ml. So, this will reduce the radiation. So, first 30 ml bolus, what does it do? It will reach the excretor system. Second bolus would have reached the medulla. And the third bolus would have reached the cortex. And all the three can be seen very well on this single phase which we acquire which combines corticomedullary, nephrographic and excretory phases. So this was all about the renal protocol. Follow our page on YouTube and Instagram for more such videos. Thank you.